uh, hello, hello. Can I have your attention just a moment? Can the members, IAU members, can you, they, can you please sit in the central row because there will be votes and then we're, that we will be able to see where you are. So can the IAU members please sit in the central section? Can we get the slide? Can we get the projection? Can I have the projection, please? Good afternoon. Welcome to the second business session of this General Assembly. We were very pleased that you're all here. And then uh, the General Secretary, Piero Bienvenuti, will continue with the session. Yes, Piero. Good afternoon and welcome again to this uh, second session of the business meeting of this General Assembly. As before, I start listing the appointed representative of the national member that are participating here. And you would notice that this is different from the previous week because we have added now the new accepted national members that can now vote together with the other representative and colleagues. So this is the list uh, to the best of our information that we receive, there might be mistakes, but we will correct that. Uh, Madeleine will collect the signature of this um, list of people so that we have a record of who was represented here for this uh, important final session of the 30th General Assembly of the International Astronomical Union. The first point is to adopt the agenda, uh, which I will show you briefly. The welcome by the president, we already had it. We will uh, appoint the official tellers that will count the votes that we will uh, have this uh, afternoon. I will then present the changes to the statutes, bylaws, and working rules, which will have to be approved by the national members. We, I will then present the individual members that are admitted by the executive committee together with the new category of junior members also admitted by the executive committee. This is um, a very important step as we discussed last week uh, and we have to do this in this sequence because in order to admit the junior members we'll have to have the approval of the change in the statutes that consider this new category. In this, after that, I will also present the list of honorary members that have been accepted. Again, this is a new uh, category that has been introduced in the, uh, in the amendment to the statutes. And we can do this only at this point after the approval of the amendments. As usual, we will have to respect the many deceased colleagues during this period, among which I will see there are uh, former presidents of the, of the union. And then we start with a very important 
a point, um, point in the agenda, which is the voting on the resolutions. And um, we will, uh, I will ask the chair of the resolution committee to present these uh, five resolutions. The first one is concerned the approval of the, strategic, the new strategic plan 2020-2030, which is in category A because it has financial implications. These financial implications have been included in the budget that will be subsequently presented. And then we have four resolution, scientific resolution, type B, uh, and we will have to uh, vote. Uh, resolution B4, uh, as we will explain when it comes to this point, is a special one, and uh, we already uh, alluded to that in the previous meeting, and we discussed at length during the preparatory meeting with the uh, representative of the national members, so I will explain you what will happen com with this um, special resolution before. There is a small proposal that has been put forward by Division F of changing the, its name, is a modification, it's not a big, uh, I mean it's a uh, adjust, adjustment, literal adjustment of um, using a better English word for the name of the division, so I think there will be uh, no uh, objection to that, but I will present it and we will make a vote by the assembly because the, uh, the name of the division was approved in Beijing and so we have to do the same procedure here for this modification. And then I will present the result of the election of new division president and vice presidents of the, of the divisions and including also the uh, members of the organizing committee of the, of the division. Then we come to the financial matters, and uh, I will re present the uh, report of the uh, Finance uh, Committee and the closure of the account and the um, projection on the next, uh, on the next uh, triennium. And that has, is a vote that has to done, be done by the representative of the national member, and it is a weighted vote. And we discussed it already during the preparatory meeting yesterday. Then we will come to the result of the uh, election of the members of the Finance Committee, Resolution Committee, Special, Re Special Nominating Committee, uh, and we prepare that during the preparatory meeting yesterday, and this will be then formally voted during this session. And the same then when they come, a very important point, which uh, it has already been presented last week, the election of the Executive Committee for the next triennium. And this time, I promise it is corrected and there was no Freudian slips in the, in the list. Uh, then there is a special point, which is a, a, um, an initiative by, taken by Evin, but is a, a, a approved and endorsed by the entire executive committee, is a special prize in astronomy outreach, development and education. And I will leave Evin to um, present the prize. And then, uh, we will know from her the dates and place, and particularly the place, the data is not so important, um, of the 32 General Assembly, something that uh, has been is a secret that has been kept very, very well preserved, and I myself don't know what will be uh, the, the location, so I'm very, very curious to see, to reach that point. Okay, this is the agenda for this afternoon, so um, I'll ask if there is any objection or any abstention to this agenda. The, the agenda is approved unanimously, and then we can go back to the... Uh, well, I, I just present you what will happen after, because you have the program on your seat, but I want just to, go, to do quickly. Immediately after the uh, closure of the, of the session, we want to make the, the group photo. The group photo will take place in this room, um, the photographer or somebody, I, mean, I think Gerard, will ask you to compact yourself in such a way that we can take, we can take a picture from a ladder here in the, in the, on, the, on the podium. And then I will, everything will be, be handed over to the Master of Ceremony and I'm, I'm not anymore uh, leading the, uh, uh, the, the, cer the, the closing ceremony. I will participate in that with my speech, but that is only a, a different story. Okay, now we go back to the agenda and now I have asked uh, three colleagues to act as official tellers 
These are Rosa Duran from Portugal, Klaus Leiterer from the US, and Gonzalo Tancredi from Uruguay. Um, thank you very much for accepting this, uh, this task of uh, counting the votes. Um, I don't think it is a heavy task, but uh, thank you again for accepting doing this service for us. Now, here we come to the first vote that we have to take, and this is the changes to the status, bylaws, and working rules. This has been presented, uh, discussed with the national members, so I just re remind you what are the key points uh, the, of the changes that we made to these uh, statutes and bylaws. We introduced a new category of junior member, and because we, uh, I sounded the opinion of the national member before uh, long ago, and I knew that the majority of national member would approve this um, uh, change, I asked, as you know, the national member to present also junior member together the usual individual members. So we have a cohort of more than 300 junior members that will join the, uh, the union um, following this uh, approval of the, of the new category. At the same time, we introduced the, uh, I mean, let, let me go back just for, again, explaining what a junior member is, is a, is a astronomer, researcher that just completed a, a PhD or equivalent course and is starting his career as a researcher in any area of astronomy. Because of the uh, initial stage, we don't know if this person would become professional astronomer that is proper individual member or ready to be individual member in the union. So we limited in time this uh, category to six years, after which if the person has it become a professional astronomer, that is a person that uh, for whose the main activity in life is the research in astronomy, he will apply for becoming individual member. If not, he will decay from the union. The effect of this, as you know, is to improve the uh, age distribution in the agency and to have fresh blood immediately inserted in the agency, in the union, sorry. The second change is the introduction of the honorary member category. These are persons that are not working in the field of astronomy but have been, um, have been being instrumental in the, the development of astronomy in their country. And each member state can propose uh, one honorary member every general assembly. Um, there have been a discussion with the, uh, with the national member to modify this and allow more than one honorary member per national member according to the, to the size of the, of the uh, national member. But this, um, there are two reasons not to uh, accept this uh, suggestion. One is formal because such a suggestion should have been done well in advance when the uh, proposal of the, of the amendment was distributed to all the national members and I was requesting for comments and I received none. So uh, it's too late to propose any uh, changes there. Um, of course, next time, the next uh, General Assembly, this can be proposed and uh, the new officers will evaluate that if it is the case to present it for voting at the next. Uh, so for the time being, um, what has been done remain and in the amendment consider that uh, honorary member can be submitted, proposal for honorary member can be submitted with one honorary member per national member per uh, General Assembly. The third amendment that is introduced is that the, uh, there was before a limit of time for interim national member and prospective members. The prospective member uh, name is, be become, is proposed to, be to become observer and we took out the time limit. So it is, uh, it is will up to the general secretary to negotiate with this uh, interim and prospective and observer members to uh, see when it is the right time for them to become a regular uh, national member that is paying uh, a regular dues to the union. And then there is a very small point uh, in, the, in the last article of the statutes that uh, describe what, will sh what, what should happen, what has to happen if the union is dissolved and that is a, was uh, instrumental to obtain the uh, charity equivalency status 
that uh, is very useful to receive donation from um, institution or foundation uh, in the United States. So this is the proposed uh, changes that have been discussed with a uh, representative of the national members, but now it comes that we have to vote for that and the vote has to be done by the national members representative. So I will do this also for the next, for the other uh, um, votes that we will have. Um, I did the straw vote yesterday, so I know what will be the result. However, so I will ask first if there is any objection to accept the amendments, any abstention. So obviously they are approved unanimously, but for the record and for the nice picture that we want to publish, I ask you to raise your um, uh, band and say that you approve the letter. Thank you very much. The amendments are approved and the new categories of junior member and honorary member are accepted now in the union. Thank you. I think this is a great <laughs> step forward. And now uh, all the work of the membership committee can be shown. I mean, the membership committee analyzed all the proposal for individual member and junior members. And uh, here is the uh, little report. Uh, it, it was more stressful this time, I must say, for the uh, resolution committee. And I thank you very much for the hard work. There was a lot of uh, interaction with, uh, with myself, with Madeleine and Rosaria. Uh, to understand uh, the new mechanism, because of course this was new. And um, uh, however, the exercise has been quite successful. And this is the uh, statistics about the application. You, you see, in, there was number of duplicates. Uh, there was some uh, mistakes, but in the end, the total individual membership application was 919, and the total junior membership application 395. Three, uh, three of this. Eight, 888 jun uh, individual member have been accepted and 352 junior member have been accepted. And um, so now I, of course, this is a long list, but I nonetheless, I want to show it to you and scan it through because uh, all these are the member. That are, as you know, the uh, uh, division president can also propose members and in fact there was three cases here that you see. And then here is the list of junior member divided by nation. Uh, I have to go quickly on this because I mean, you will find all this information on, the, on our web. I invite you to analyze carefully and I will definitely will um, prepare statistics country by country because particularly for the junior member, since it's a new thing, um, each country, each national member should consider what happened and why in some cases the junior member are very numerous, even some cases more numerous than the individual member and why in other cases they are very few. Um, even if the country is in terms of the development of astronomy very evolved. So um, I just want to make this comment because I think that uh, the success of this is strictly linked to the publicity that the national member would do inviting a junior member. Okay, this was the list of junior member and then we have a more numerous list of individual member per country. And again, I go through slowly, but uh, you will have to see that uh, in detail on the, uh, on the, on the website of the union. This will be published immediately as soon as we restart uh, the work in the offices. You'll have to leave a couple of weeks uh, of uh, vacation for everybody before things can start again. But okay, this is the, we done, will be done very quickly. Uh, all the data are in this computer and so you know. Okay, now, um, I think that we have to welcome these new members in the union with a good applause.
And now I just want to show you a very small statistic, a small exercise that I made. I tried to see how these new members are divided among the nine divisions that we have. And as you can see, I make the statistics, uh, the, the one on the left is the new cohort of people divided by junior member and individual members. And you can judge yourself about the distribution among, um, among divisions. Of course, the total number of these people is more than the total number of individuals because each uh, member can choose more than one division. But this gives you an um, indication of the scientific interest of the new cohort. And then I, I compare that to the uh, existing uh, members, and that is the panel on the, on the right. There you see in blue the global individual member coming in, uh, uh, sorry, in, the, in blue the individual member of the existing population and in um, yellow amaranth the total member junior and individual of 2018. I will produce many more graphs of this sort and paste and post it on the, on the, on the web because I think it's very interesting. But this is a type of of information that you can now extract yourself from the tool that we will um, uh, put at your disposal on the, on the database of our union. Now, I come to the honorary member. Also, this has been um, successful. Uh, we had uh, this number of, um, uh, of um, submission, of uh, proposal. All of them have been, uh, all the proposals that have been made has been approved by the executive committee because they consider that they were exactly the type of uh, person that uh, should be appointed as honorary member. Um, at the moment, they have not yet been informed that they are accepted because I wanted first to present them to you. Following this, uh, the end of this um, uh, ed assembly, I will write a formal letter to them and we will prepare also a nice certificate that show that they are uh, honorary member of the International Astronomical Union. I'd like to go through one by one now. Um, this is um, uh, Jiri Dushek, nominated by the Czech uh, National Committee for Astronomy, and the motivation is for his exceptional support to the development of astronomy in the Czech Republic, initiating several modernization projects as director of the Nikolaus Copernicus Observatory, and more recently as a member of the Czech Senate, Senate sustaining science in the Czech society. The Egypt National Committee proposed uh, Atem Ham Hamdi Roda for his strong support to the development of astronomy in, Eje in Egypt, establishing the Kotamiya Center of Excellence in Astronomy and Space Science and working on the establishment of the Egyptian Space Agency. Tefera Oala Vondumegu, this is my approximate pronunciation, you have to excuse me because it's not so easy. This is nominated by the Ethiopian National Committee of Astronomy for his contribution to the development of astronomy and space science in Ethiopia. As board chairman of the Ethiopian Space Science Society and of the Entoto Space Observatory and Research Center. As former deputy prime minister of the Ethiopian government, he strongly supported space science and technology. In France, Christian Buhl, a leading expert in optical instrumentation and a charismatic figure in the world of amateur astronomers, he encouraged the amateur community to engage in challenging semi-professional observing programs, developing for them modern high-quality instrumentation. Hungary, Attila Mistner, for his untiring activity as General Secretary of the Hungarian Astronomical Society and as editor of the magazine Meteor. His enthusiasm in popularizing astronomy has been instrumental in attracting young students to astronomy who eventually became professional astronomers. The Irish National Committee proposed Joe Hogan for employing his entrepreneurship skill and his effective influence on political makers to raise Irish astronomy to international excellence, being instrumental in the construction of the International LOFAR Radio Telescope in 2017 and in convincing the Irish government to join ESO in 2018. I think this is really uh, a great thing for uh, Ireland to join ESO and I think this is certainly deserve this honorary position. The Russian Federation 
proposed Olga Vasilieva and the, for her strong support to the science of astronomy that led her as Minister of Education and Science to reintroduce in 2017 the study of astronomy in the Russian school system. And the Ukraine National Committee proposed Gordienko Sergei Pavlovich, founder and editor of the magazine The Universe Space Time for his passionate dedication to scientific journalism and for the popularization of astronomy in Ukraine. And finally, the US proposed Wayne Rosing for his long-term and sustained efforts to establish, build, and operate Las Cumbres Observatory as a unique resource for astrophysics. I think, uh, I think it's, it's very significant that now we have the possibility of honoring these uh, people that, although not being astronomer, they've been really instrumental to develop astronomy in their country. So I'd like also to welcome them as honorary members. I think we definitely need this type of people and recognize them will make them more proud of being our friends and our support. We come now to a rather sad point, which is to uh, recognize those colleagues that passed away during this uh, triennium. And as I said before, there are three former presidents that uh, were deceased during this period. Yoshihide Kozai, Alexander Boyachuk, and Robert Kraft. And of course, there is a long list of um, colleagues that are not anymore with us. Many friends, many friends that have left us. So I would like, I will show you now the list in two slides, but I would like to propose that we respect a minute of silence honoring these colleagues. Thank you. Now we come to a very important point. In the activity of the union, we have resolutions that are voted and that are related to our science. At this point, I would like to ask the uh, chair of the resolution committee to come to the podium and to introduce uh, the resolution that will be voted. Thank you, Peter. So I'd like to present the five resolutions that we have for voting. You'll recall uh, the A-type resolution is a budgetary concern. I mentioned before, this time I'm going to show you the page images from the, the resolutions that are actually posted on the IEU website. This is not a paraphrasing as I did before. This first one is about the IAU strategic plan 2020 to 2030, as you've seen in this booklet, perhaps uh, know well, have heard a lot about here. To remind you of some of the history of this, this originally started as a plan to uh, extend the astronomy for the developing world. Um, to 2021, but then it was enlarged in 2016 with a working group and decided to encompass all of the activities of the IEU. And that's what we now have as the IEU strategic plan 2020 to 2030. This working group sought input from various stakeholders, submitted draft plans for review, and finally prepared a draft that was posted on the IAU website in May 2018. So this would be to resolve that as stated in the resolution of 2015, the pursuit and goals of the tr strategic plan, astronomy for the developing world should continue until 2021. 
and that starting in 2019, the executive committee should prepare the implementation of this new strategic plan 2020 to 2030 with particular attention to the overlap time. That the goals of the strategic plan 2020 to 2030 should be pursued to the full extent starting in 2021, which is after this overlap time. That the executive committee shall include midterm reviews in 2024 and 2027 and that a new strategic plan 2030 to 2040, 2030 to 2040 should be prepared by the executive committee to be presented for approval in 2030. So I uh, call for discussion on this resolution. Uh, seeing no, uh, discussion or uh, questions, uh, then uh, perhaps we should uh, move to a vote. So we now open the vote for this resolution A1. So I'm going to ask if there is any vote against it. Any abstention? There is one abstention and all the rest will be, I think, so it is unanimous with one abstention, which is not exactly the point. So I would like to, for those who are in favor, to raise their um, card. And Madeleine will take note of the abstention so that we know exactly the, uh, the precise number of the vote. Thank you very much. So the new strategic plan for 2020, 2030 is approved. Okay, resolution B1 on geocentric and international terrestrial reference systems and frames, and this has to do with the rotation of the Earth. So there's some history to begin this, and you'll recall that in 2000, the barycentric celestial reference system and the geocentric celestial reference system were um, agreed upon. And that in 2000, the General Assembly of the International Union of Geodesy and Geophysics endorsed of these IAU resolutions. And to remind you that these are, uh, have a metric tensor in general relativity also um, endorsed by our resolutions. Recognizing that th the General Assembly Agreement in Manchester 2000, uh, that the IUGG adopted a resolution to define a geocentric terrestrial reference system as a system of geocentric space-time coordinates co-rotating with the Earth, and that the IUGG also in 2007 adopted a resolution that endured the de endorsed the definition of an international terrestrial reference system as the specific GTRS for which the orientation is operationally maintained in continuity with past international agreements and also that the General Assembly of the United Nations in 2015 adopted a resolution uh, having to do with geodetic reference frames. So this resolution recommends that the ITRS be adopted by the IEU also as the preferred GTRS for scientific and technical applications, and that the IEU engage together with other concerned organizations with the United Nations to promote the implement implementation of the UN GGIM roadmap. Is there any discussion on this resolution having to do with Earth rotation? Seeing nothing, I propose we vote. Yes. So we open now the vote for the resolution B1. Uh, is there any vote against? Any abstention? So in this case, the vote is unanimous in favor. Again, I like if you can raise your card. Yes. 
so that we take. Sir? All, all, all the you, uh, members. Oops, oops, oops. So, sorry, sorry. Oh. Uh, well, you have to excuse that sometime even the general secretary gets goes banana right <laughs> after two weeks. So this is a scientific type of resolution. So the vote is by individual members. Sorry. Um, and so now there is a little trick and little point that uh, Gerard just mentioned to me. As you see, uh, we have a uh, a badge which has a light blue color and that distinguishes the IU member from non-IU members. Now, <laughs> I'm, I'm quoting what the chair of the General Assembly has tell, told me, but anyway, the new, the new incoming member, individual member, and the new junior member, because when they arrived, they were not yet admitted, they had a white badge, right? Nonetheless, uh, they are invited to vote. We trust them that they, they are proper IU members. So I can open again, sorry, the votation for the resolution B1, which is a scientific nature, and so it is voted by individual member. So is there any vote against? I see none. Any abstention? I see none. So again, oops, there is one, please, yes. One. So there is one abstention. And can you, uh, all who are in favor, can raise the badge? Thank you. The proposition, the uh, resolution B1 is approved with one abstention. Thank you. Okay. So now this is resolution B2 on the third realization of the International Celestial Reference Frame. So this is of the stars as opposed to the rotation. And there's some history also about the IAU previous resolutions on um, international celestial reference system and reference frames. And reminding that in 2009, the organizations responsible for astrometric and geodetic DLVI observing programs take appropriate measures to continue existing and develop improved methods. That since then, new methods and techniques and measurements have been taken, which have doubled the volume of astrometric and geodetic DLVI data. That an IAU working group was formed in 2012 to generate the third realization of the International Celestial Reference Frame. And that this working group has finished its job and presents here a th the third realization, resolves that as of the 1st of January 2019, the fundamental realization of the International Celestial Reference System shall be the third realization of the International Celestial Reference Frame as constructed by the IEU Working Group. That organizations responsible for these observing programs continue to develop them and at multiple radio frequencies and with a specific eff effort on the Southern Hemisphere. And that organization is responsible for defining high accuracy reference frames at other wavelengths, take appropriate measures to align to the ICRF3. So is there a discussion on this resolution? Seeing none, I suggest we vote. Okay, now we proceed for the vote on resolution uh, B2. Uh, is there any vote against the resolution B2? I see none. Any abstention? I see none. So the resolution B2 is approved unanimously.
<laughs> Can you raise your also for the picture? So, thank you. Okay, this is resolution B3 on preservation, digitization, and scientific exploration of historical astronomical data. Noting that historical data is important for time series astronomy and that a previous resolution nearly 20 years ago um, leaves a great majority still inaccessible digitally. That appreciation for the importance of this data seems to be lacking and that although archives and records are still being maintained, many are in a state of increasing decay and that many important data sets still being collected uh, may not have resources for preservation. Recognizing that the data accumulated over past decades and even centuries will be lost unless a concentrated action is taken to identify and preserve all significant records recommends that a concerted effort be made to ensure the preservation, digitization, and scientific exploration of all of astronomy's historical data, both analog and primitive digital, and associated records. Is there any discussion on this resolution? Seeing none, I suggest we vote. So we vote now for the resolution B3. Is there any vote against? I see none. Any abstention? I see none. So would you please raise your badge to show your approval? So resolution B3 is approved unanimously. Okay, this is now resolution before that has already been widely discussed during this period by many people. And uh, I'd like to just to, before I leave the, the floor again to Bruce, to explain what we, uh, what the executive committee has decided to go, to do with this uh, resolution, because it has generated very lively and interesting discussion. And because of that, we think that um, it will be wise to have the vote extended to the entire IU community. We didn't uh, propose this from the beginning, as the uh, statute says, that uh, we should announce the uh, decision to take an electronic vote uh, three months in advance with the respect of the General Assembly. Nonetheless, we will make a vote here with the current person, people that are here, to get a feeling of what is the general opinion of this assembly that has had the advantage to participate lively in the discussion that this has generated, person to person and in groups, and this has been instrumental to, to create a background that it will be presented to the entire community for making their judgment on the vote. So, the vote here is not a definite vote, it's a straw vote, as we say in English, uh, but it will be indicative of what is the uh, general opinion of the people participating here who had the opportunity to discuss it. All this will be condensed in a document that will present the vote for, uh, for the entire community and they will ask to be voted electronically. The vote is uh, electronic vote, as it's done also for the election of the uh, president and vice president and um, um, organizing committee of our division and, and commission is done by an external company, so it's not done by the IAU. And so it's, uh, it's a professional uh, company that does that, and so we will have let them do the, uh, the, the vote and they will publish the result independently of the IAU office. Uh, we, um, we will start this uh, procedure immediately after the General Assembly uh, allowing the office to be relieved for a couple of weeks, but then in mid-September this will be announced and uh, we will start the vote, which will be open for a month, 
and then uh, by the mid of October we will know the result. But now I leave to Bruce to describe the, in detail the resolution and to uh, illustrate the comments that we have, I mean, the most significant comments that we have received in this, uh, during this week. So this is resolution B4 on the suggested renaming of the Hubble law. So there uh, begins again with some history that the apparent discovery of the, um, the, the discovery of the apparent recession of galaxies is a milestone in astronomical science. And that in 1927, George Lemaitre published in French this paper with English translation at the bottom. In this, he first rediscovered Friedman's dynamic solution to Einstein's general relativity equations, derive that the expansion of the universe implies the spectra of distant galaxies are redshifted by an amount proportional to their distance, and published, used published data on velocities and photometric distances to galaxies to derive the rate of expansion of the universe. And at that time, his remarkable discovery was largely unperceived because of the journal and the language that George Lemaitre and Edwin Hubble both attended the third IAU General Assembly in Leiden in 1928, that Edwin Hubble in 1929 published a paper with a similar title in which he proposed and derived the linear distance velocity relation for galaxies, ultimately including new velocity data in his 1931 paper. And soon after the publication of his papers, the cosmic expansion became universally known as the Hubble Law. Also, then in 1931, on invitation by the journal Monthly Notice of the Royal Astronomical Society, George Lemaitre translated in English his original 1927 paper. And here we revise the uh, text that was presented to you last week to include his words uh, directly from a, a letter to the editor of the monthly notices, deliberately omitting the section in which he derived the rate of expansion because, quote, he did not find advisable to reprint his provisional discussion of radial velocities, which is clearly of no actual interest, and also the geometrical note, which could be replaced by a small bibliography of ancient and new papers on the subject, quoting George Lemaitre there. Uh, number seven, desiring to pay tribute to both George Lemaitre and Edwin Hubble for their fundamental contributions to the development of modern cosmology and to honor the intellectual integrity of George Lemaitre that made him value more the progress of science rather than his own visibility. And here we remove the word modesty. To highlight the role of the IAU General Assemblies in fostering exchanges of views in international discussions and to inform future scientific discourses with historical facts, resolves to recommend that from now on, the expansion of the universe be referred to as the hubble lemaitre law. And the third change I've indicated also in red is that additional reference from Mario Livio's uh, 2011 paper. So hearing many comments from you by email and in the hallways and, and the resolution committee similarly, I put together a list of some of the main points with the answers as we, as we have uh, returned in all cases in emails to you. So is the IAU recommending that any other Hubble name things change? The Hubble constant, the Hubble nebula, the Hubble sequence? No, it's just what it says. It's the expansion because that was the matrix contribution. Will this lead to other renamings? This particular case, as stated in the resolution, involves one of the most important astronomical discoveries, and the history of this is clear in the literature about the contributions by Lemaitre and by the IAU, and there are books written about this. Informing future discourses about this history can only be good, in our opinion. Future discourses about other historical precedents should strive to be correct, too, and if the current resolution begins this conversation, then that is good. This does not mean that other historical reflections should be modified by IAU resolutions. Another question we got, should others who notice the correlation between galaxy velocity and size or brightness or distance be recognized also in this resolution? 
No. The others, such as Wirtz and Lundmark, are noted in one of the bibliographic references, but they did not interpret these relationships as expansion. They referred in all cases to De Sitter or Einstein universes, in which case the uh, velocity uh, change was a matter of changing clocks in a static universe. The resolution recommends only that the expansion of the universe be referred to as the hubble lemaitre law, not that the velocity-distance relation be given additional names. Should other contributors to the data used by the early expansion law, such as by Slipher, or Henrietta Leavitt, or Stromgen, whose paper was referenced for the velocities used by Lemaitre, should they be acknowledged as well? No, because they did not use their data to discover this expansion, nor did they invent the new theory to discover the expansion. So these are brief answers to some of your most pressing questions. And now I open up um, the session to other questions or comments that you might have. Uh, who has a microphone? Can, you, uh, can some volunteer go with a microphone there? Right behind you. I would like to, to draw your attention to a couple of points. Uh, the first is a question that occurs to me. Is this the only case of its time, type in the history of astronomy? Because there are many injustices in, in history. And I don't think it's possible to remedy them. And I don't think IAU has any particular uh, expertise in redressing historical grievances. Naming, renaming is a very tricky business. The present case is a relatively simple case, harmless case, because it involves recent times. It involves the Western world only. But if you go back slightly in time, in colonial times, Europeans working in the colonies felt that they were being discriminated against by the mainland and not being given credit. If you go further back, then a very major question would occur which will come to IAU sooner or later. In summary, it would be the West versus the non-West. I think IAU should first apply its mind to framing a policy on renaming, and then apply it to the case by case, taking this as the first case. Personally, my suggestion would be, don't open Pandora's box and keep away. Educate the book writers, but don't pass a resolution. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Um, we also have consulted with the History Division and the Galaxy Division and others, and there is indeed a long list of uh, namings that can be questioned. Your statement exemplifies one of the uh, main good results, I believe, of a resolution like this, and that is to bring into the open uh, many of these cases that should be thought about and considered by historians and writers. And this is a, perhaps a first, perhaps uh, the resolutions We'll, uh, we'll end here at this type, and this will be enough to uh, bring forward these thoughts. But I think it is a worthy of discussion, as you have said. And that's the uh, part of the intent of this resolution, is to open up that discussion. That doesn't mean um, everyone needs a resolution. That's for future generations to decide. know why chronology has not been respected and it is not suggested as Lemaitre Hubble law. Why isn't this to be called the Lemaitre Hubble law? And perhaps here are the best answers. We, this uh, has been debated by the uh, presenting body, which is the executive committee, so we made an internal exercise and we decided that 
just for aesthetical reason of sounding, if you try to say the hub, Le Maître Hubble or Hubble Le Maître, Hubble Le Maître sounds much more easily. And so <laughs> that is the only reason why we choose that. Well, I, I will add to that uh, on the scientific point. Um, Hubble went on, starting in 1929, to build new instrumentation and to make many new measurements, including discovering galaxies at a good fraction of the speed of light. His contribution is not to be uh, put down here. It, it should still be recognized for what it was. We wish here to lift up or highlight the additional contribution made by, by Lemaitre. Uh, I have a question related to the history as well, which is that mathematically, the derivation was done twice independently. Lemaitre did it in 1927. Friedman did it in 1922. He also derived the, the equations for the expansion of the universe. Why is preference given to Lemaitre over Friedman? Because Lemaitre had the complete picture, because he made the connection to velocities and distances. So what we believe today started with Lemaitre. But it's true, Friedman had this. Lemaitre didn't know about it. Um, and Einstein, a very influential figure at that time, was still strongly pushing for a, a static universe, as was the city. Okay, I am in favor of renaming, and I will explain why. Because, uh, as you said, there are a lot of things after Hubble's name, and uh, in this uh, area, in the expansion, the matter's contribution is not less, and so at least in one case we can combine these two names. And in addition, what is related to this, of course not Hubble sequence, but Hubble constant, which is directly re related, e in case if we accept, then also it could be re renamed, I think. Um, yes, thank you for that comment. Um, Lemaitre had 625 as a Hubble constant. Hubble had 500. The Hubble constant has varied a lot. So it is not so much a value as the as the idea, the, the theory, what we believe today as the expansion and the associated rate of expansion. And that expansion is the, what we're proposing to be renamed. The, the, the idea that there's a constant involved or the value of that constant is not part of the proposal. Yeah, I have a problem with the way the note is designed because we are discussing here, we know what is the background. But this note will be seen by members of public, it will be seen by press, and what the note says, Lamaitre wrote his paper. After that, Hubble and Lamaitre met in a conference. Probably they discussed this. So in principle, Hubble knew about the, that Lamaitre has done some calculation. Then Hubble writes a paper, but doesn't mention Lamaitre's cal calculation. So what do we call that in, in modern context? Press will have a field day with this. If they, they will say that Hubble stole results. They, the, the way it is written is very problematic. The um, Hubble, a 19, well, people we hope will read these papers. The Hubble 1929 paper uh, concluded in its last paragraph with a reflection on what his new velocity distance relation, which he, where he used old velocities but his new distances, what that meant for cosmology. And he only discussed the, dis, the De Sitter static universe um, as as that uh, implication, even though he may have known about um, Lemaitre or perhaps uh, didn't fully fathom the, the implications of what Lemaitre was talking about. So uh, we do not wish to uh, guess what these people were thinking, uh, whether they were following uh, conventions at the time. Um, it is merely a statement of the historical record, and we hope that historians who have already investigated this and written books about it uh, will continue to do so. But this is to elevate the role in the public's eye of this second person in a very important part of uh, astronomy. Yes, I agree with my honorable colleague that uh, we don't want to open a Pandora box. And uh, renaming things here and then, it's uh, dangerous. But in this case, I think it's very important and I'm in favor of making the change. I was going to ask what my other honorable colleague said, ask why we are not renaming this uh, the Lemaitre-Hubble relation. 
I heard your elegant, very elegant response, but you did not convince me. <laughs> I, I must confess I'm slightly confused about what exactly the proposal is because the velocity distance relation is generally known as the Hubble law and that's what the first section also states and now in your explanation you say we are not adding anything to the distance velocity relation and we are attaching that to the expansion of the universe so I think there are two different things that one really has to distinguish one is a purely empirical finding and the other one is an interpretation as expansion of the universe and the text of the resolution in itself seems to be inconsistent in not making clear what really is meant and whether we are in whether we now have a Hubble law or Hubble relation that is the distance velocity relation on an empirical basis and a Hubble Lemaitre law that also in includes an interpretation of what exactly um, are we actually proposing here. Yeah, thank you. So um, as you know, there are several ways within the framework of general relativity to explain a relationship between velocity and say brightness of galaxies or some other size, some other measure of distance. And, and we, um, in, in stating first that this apparent recession is a major milestone, we are not uh, claiming a certain uh, cosmology here. Then comes the history and then the interaction and finally the uh, invitation to republish in English with a resolution that is centered on the expansion of the universe. And whereas we often mix because we're so used to thinking of the expansion of the universe as a, um, as a result of the velocity distance relation or as a manifestation of that, in those times they did not. The velocity distance relation had another interpretation which was changed in a, a sort of a watershed moment with Lemaitre's paper and when it was finally realized. So th um, there is a distinction among astronomers who know this history and know the differences between these different interpretations and solutions of Einstein's uh, cosmology equations that may not be uh, so easily communicated to the public, but it is, it is something that um, should be attempted. And I think merely to, s to say the expansion of the universe is the Hubble Lemaitre law, that is the very basic statement and that is something the public, hu the public can understand. Yeah. If the volunteer look at me, I show you where the mic microphone should come. Now there is that person there. Hi, uh, yes, I have a question of the history of this. Has the IAU ever made an official statement or declaration calling this the Hubble Law, or was this an organic process? I don't believe the IAU has ever had a resolution or made a statement on, so the, on the naming of laws or concepts. So if this was organic originally, should we just try and address this organically in the community and encourage people to use the new name without making a formal declaration? Well, we are, it is a recommendation. It is not an insistence. It, it, and so this is up to everyone. But it is a, uh, an IAU highlight. It does have an IAU connection because these two, from very remote parts of the world at a time when travel was expensive and difficult, did get together for an IAU General Assembly. It highlights the value of international meetings and of, and of uh, people with diverse backgrounds to get together. So um, it does seem appropriate in that sense to be an IAU resolution, to call attention to the history, to a person, and to the value of international meetings, which started 100 years ago. Thank you. Thank hey, you, Vera. I, I share many of the concerns of the first colleague who spoke. And I'd just like to ask one thing for education that probably many of us have asked the same thing. If this is such a clear-cut case, why has it taken 90 years for the IEU to consider it. No. <laughs> well, no, there is an answer to that. The, most of these publications, uh, which really dug into the history, 
began, as we referenced a couple here around 2011, some earlier books. So this has been growing. And, and uh, it does seem appropriate now. Thank you, Vera. I will be voting against this resolution, um, not because I don't have great sympathy with the uh, details of this particular case, but because I tend to agree with those people who have argued that this is a Pandora's box. I think that there are many uh, other situations which would not be as clear-cut. and We've already heard here how even this relatively clear-cut situation is somewhat complex, and there are much more complex situations out there that are likely to cause division within this union on the basis of scientific opinion, but also on national language, gender, and other grounds, and I think that's undesirable. And the reason I believe that's particularly undesirable is because there is so much more that this union should be doing. There are things that we need to do in organizing and coordinating our scientific efforts, in making sure that uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion are things that we focus on, and in making sure that we continue to do the Office of Astronomy for Development type actions. These are the things that we should be spending our time and effort on and not diverting them into uh, things that will have relatively little impact on the future like this. Thank you. Thank you. I want to point out that there is already an excellent precedent for the IAU renaming something, and that is the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. Originally, from about oh, 1914, was it, that uh, the diagram was named the Russell diagram, and for the best part of 20 years, it remained the Russell diagram, but then, at the instigation of Bengt Strömgren in the 1930s, I guess it was about 1932, the um, IAU decided to recommend renaming the diagram the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. And indeed, Hertzsprung had plotted this diagram before Russell, uh, and therefore his name actually came first. And that did not open a Pandora's box and it's universally accepted. So if the IAU can do it in the 1930s, why can't we do it now? Thank you, this is John, may I introduce, this is John Hernshaw, the president of Division C, which includes the history of astronomy. Yes, I, I just wanted to say I will vote in favor of this for all the reasons you gave. And I just want to remind you that something similar happened recently in, in particle physics with the Higgs boson. And you know there's been a big discussion and the particle physicists agreed that in the future they talk about the Brout angles higgs mechanism. And after that, they keep the Higgs particle. So it's a very similar question. And it happened some time ago. It hasn't opened the Pandora box. And everybody's now in particle physics doing it in that way. And I think we can just do the same. Thank you very much. And I want to thank all of you for your comments. We've uh, come at a time when we should close this and, and open it up for a vote. Do we still have a question? Yes, yes, please. Yes, of course, we can continue for a longer time with interesting intervention and comment. But uh, we have also to respect the time of this. So at this point, I think we should try to make a vote. Now, this has been done particularly to make the tellers do something, because... Uh, I repeat, this vote is a straw vote, is an is a indication of, after all this discussion, that has been very informative for all of us, we'd like to see what is the... Um, feeling of the, of the audience with respect to this uh, resolution. We will take note of the, of the votes. Um, we will, uh, to facilitate the counting, because this is now becoming a bit uh, difficult, we will make, we will take pictures of the vote. 
I promise that this will be used only internally, so <laughs> there will be no softer face recognition on. It will just be used to, to count and to be, get a better idea of the numbers, and this will be published without the pictures. And uh, then we will open, we will condense all this discussion and uh, I think we can invite everybody who has a significant comment to in pro and against this resolution to submit that by mail and we will compose a document that is, will be presented by mid-September saying this is the situation, this is the resolution, th these are the reasons and this is the type of comments that we have received on the basis of this you would express your opinion. So, may I start asking who is opposing to accept this resolution? And I'm asking the teller to take a quick vote and they will tell me when they are satisfied with, it, with counting the votes. Sorry to keep you with the hands on, but I mean, that's part of our task. And it's always a good exercise anyway. Okay, I think the tellers are now consulting, but essentially they, it's, it's. Being this straw vote, I think that the, the number that you got, friends, tellers, are okay. Now, I will do for the approval, let's do in a slightly different way, way to facilitate the tellers. Sorry? No, no, we have to, ah, okay, abstention, yes, sorry. But, I'm sorry, before we vote for abstention, what I wanted to say is, for facilitate your, your task, we do by sectors. So we start with the sectors on my right, who is abstaining? Then we come to this sector on, the, on my right, will you please count? Okay, and then this sector and the one on my left, who is abstaining?
All right, and then since the tellers are on this side, again, of these sectors here, who is in favor? Okay, thank you very much. Now, the two sectors on my right, who is in favor?
Don't forget the officers. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Now, just for the photographer, he asked me if we can rebolt for just for a second, just for a snatch shot. So please, who is against, raise the hand for a moment. Against, against the resolution, just for, just for a picture. Okay, thank you, the abstention. And in favor. We have to wait to clap because the real vote will be the electronic one. Anyway, I think the, <laughs> anyway, I think the expression of your uh, is quite clear. So thank you very much. Uh, I will ask the teller to to come with a number after they have consulted by themselves, and then I will indicate what is the count uh, at some point during the presentation. But I think uh, the chair of the, resolution, of the resolution committee would like to say a few words. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the resolution committee. If you would stand, we have Keiji Kunha, Toshio Fukushima, Sergei Kloner, and Rene Kron Kortemir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to everybody. Uh, we continue now with the, uh, with the agenda. And uh, we have now this, um, I would think, think non-controversial proposal uh, coming from the Division F to modify their own name. Uh, I read what they propose. The steering committee of Division F Planetary System Bioastronomy is proposing to modify the name of its division in planetary system and astrobiology. Although the two terms, bioastronomy and astrobiology, can be considered synonyms, only the latter can be found in the most authoritative English dictionaries as the most commonly used and correct term to indicate the field of science encompassing astronomy and biology concerned with the origin, early evolution, distribution, and future of life in the universe. So the executive committee was presented with this proposal in its meeting number 99 in Pune last year and has endorsed the proposal that is now presented to the General Assembly for formal approval. This is a quite simple thing and logical thing, so I'm asking if there is any against this uh, modification. Any abstention? So this is approved unanimously and I don't think we need to raise the hand for this. Thank you very much. Now, I'm coming now to the uh, announcement of the appointments of division president and the vice president. This is done by electronic vote, as, you, as usual. So there was, was all this was announced. And I present here the participation in the vote, which is, um, as you can see, uh, almost uh, constant across divisions, which is a good sign. Of course, there are divisions with more people and uh, less, but the uh, average percentage of voters are, are significant. It could be better, but uh, it's not insignificant. So this is the result. And now I go through all the division presenting the uh, name. These have been published on the, on the web, but I think this is a good opportunity to review them. So in Division A, in division a the new president is Daniel Hestroffer from France and the Vice President, Norbert Zacharias. And there you see the members of the, um, of the organizing committee, the, the first term, so the new one, and the second term that continue. And then you see the ex officio member, which are the commission presidents. You can see that. And of course, the uh, past president, Anne Lemaitre, uh, remain advisor as, as, as it is in the, in the status by law. Division B, the president is Michael Burton and Gabriele Giovannini, uh, vice president. 
and there you see the names of the other member of the committee and Pietro Bertini remain as advisor as past president. In Division C, Susanna Deusta of the United States and Richard de Gries is the vice president and there you see the other members and John Earnshaw remain advisor as past president. In Division D, Elena Pian from Italy is the president and Isabel Grenier from France is the vice president. And Christa Coveliuto remain the advisor as past. Division E, Sarah Gibson is the president and Cristina Mandrini, vice president. In Division F, Gonzalo Tancredi from Uruguay is the president and Maria Barucci, France, the vice president. In division G, David Soderblom is the president and Andrea Prisa is the um, vice president. And Corinne Chabonel remain advisor as past president. Division H, Leonardo Testi is the president and Monica Rubio, the vice president. In Division J, finally, Dennis Burgarella, France, is the president, and Kim B. Tran, vice president, and Klaus remain the advisor. So this is the new composition of division presidents and vice presidents, and we wish all them a fruitful work and energetic work as it has done with the previous president. We are confident that this is now becoming the real uh, backbone of the activity of the union through the president. And uh, I'm certainly uh, looking forward to, uh, as an advisor, to participate in the discussion at the executive committee with the division president. This has been very important, very fruitful, and that will continue. <laughs> now we come to the uh, well, for the union, very important point, which is the vote on financial report. Here you see the, uh, the report by the finance, uh, finance committee. Um, uh, they have received all the um, data, all the annual uh, account from the office and the projection. And uh, this has been discussed also in uh, video conferences with them in order to clarify some, some points. And as you can see, they have approved uh, both the, um, the accounts and the projection for the for next year. Now, we have been discussing this in detail with the, this, this vote as obviously is on financial matters, so is is done by the national member with their weights, and we have discussed at length yesterday the, uh, and, and also the, during the, pre the first um, preparatory meeting, the, um, the, financial, the financial report and projection. Now, in this discussion was very useful because we discovered some uh, little uh, mistakes in the, in the material mistakes in the in the report, which we have been we have corrected. So I will present here some uh, points that have been corrected because I think it's important. This has been now in, uh, updated in the in the document, and you will receive the the final version uh, immediately after the um, the uh, general assembly. This is show you in graphical form the evolution of the bank assets, that is the money that we have in the bank. Uh, we keep a reserve, which is almost equivalent to one year income, that is roughly one million. And uh, we have a other two accounts that are used to all the transactions. The other are saving accounts that are kept in the bank. Uh, the, no, the new thing that ha has happened uh, uh, during this, um, well, um, last year, is that we have eliminated one old account, bank account that we had with uh, UBS in, uh, in Switzerland. It, it was a remnant of the time when all the transactions were done in Swiss francs. And that account was kept for, for a while. Uh, and uh, recently we, see, we saw that uh, the cost of keeping the account open was uh, superior respect was greater than the, uh, uh, than the interest that we were gaining. So we were losing money keeping the account, so we close it. And I tell you, uh, if you ever try to close a, 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 an account on a Swiss bank, this is a, something that requires some 
hard work. I didn't go physically, but I was ready to take a plane and go there to explain why we wanted to close. Anyway, that is done, and the money has been transferred to our normal account. So as you can see, the triennium has been quite um, favorable because of a number of, of situations, particularly also we, we try to, um, to change some expensive contract that we had, and this has be become a, a, an interesting saving. Now, this is what uh, we propose to, um, as a, mm, uh, to vote. The key point here is that we ask to, as it was for the previous triennium, to have an adjustment, an annual adjustment of 2% to take into account the fluctuation and inflation. And I would like to thank the representative of Latvia because he discovered a little problem that we had because obviously I intended to indicate the unit to be paid in uh, rounded to the uh, to the next euro, as you can see there. But the Excel sheet that I was using uh, was keeping the, the decimal inside, and so the computation in the end was uh, uh, containing uh, decimals. Uh, this over a, a, a total in income of about one million, as you see, there was a difference of about 100 euros that, of course, is a mistake that I we recognize. Now, this is the correct figure. Okay, so this has been included now in the proposal and this is what we are going to vote. Uh, there was also a, a comment by some uh, representative that we should keep for the time being the um, contribution to the new in International Council of Science, ex ICSU, to the level that they are require, require, uh, requesting to have and to enter into discussion with them to review the uh, amount, the annual amount that we have to pay. So we have reintroduced that uh, uh, in, the, in the projection uh, not to upset uh, the, the, the situation. But we will discuss with ICSU, uh, or the new officers will discuss with ICSU, um, a, well, uh, the ECS, a, a new uh, method for computing the annual due that we have to pay. And now this is the uh, the updated projection that takes into account the, the slight variation that we had to, to include. And um, there you can see that um, uh, this is the projection in the main area of expenditure, science, education, executive committee expenditure, and administration and operation. And there you have the total and the net result per year. And you can see that this year the result will be negative because we are spending, we have been spending uh, quite a bit of money on grants, and that is normal uh, when we have a general assembly. We, we provide uh, a large amount of money for uh, supporting young people uh, to participate in the agency. The, the, um, the result will still be negative next year because we have a lot of the initiative for celebrating the 100 years of the union. These are all projects that are very useful, very interesting and we want to support them, of course, these are um, uh, need to be, to be funded. This situation, as it is presented here, doesn't take into account the possibility of having contribution from sponsor, and so eventually this uh, figure will change if we are successful in getting money, funding some project. I'd like to present this in graphical form that, uh, to explain what was the logic in preparing uh, the projection. As you can see there, we start from a very favorable situation at, and at the end of uh, 2017. Uh, most of the money that we have accumulated there has gone into, into grants. Uh, we, had, um, we distributed uh, more than, um, than uh, 600 grants and uh, we also contributed to a number of um, uh, waiving the, the registration fee for invited speakers. So all that money went essentially in promoting the, the General Assembly. And um, then you see the, the, there will be a decrease also next year because of the um, celebration and the projects connected to it. And then the, we will gain a bit more in the, in the 2020 in the projection. And then we will spend again quite a bit of money for supporting the General Assembly in Busan. Uh, what, the, what I use as a logic to, to, uh, to put the, together the projection is that we should reach in 2021 the uh, normal situation for a non-governmental, uh, non-profit organization like us, 
sh the rule of thumb is that you should have in the, in the, in the reserve uh, the equivalent of one year income, that is roughly one million. And as you can see, this is what we uh, want to achieve in this triennium. So this is the logic by which I prepare uh, the, the, the budget. And uh, I think it's important to see that the, what is the distribution of our expenditure in the triennium. Um, as you can see, most of the money goes into supporting science, that is the uh, symposia, and in education and outreach. So the project connected to the two offices of uh, uh, OEO and OED, and the EASIA school, the Office of Young Astronomer, because this, is, uh, this budget is uh, matching or starting with the new, um, with the new um, strategic plan that you just approved, as we said, the strategic plan is a category A because it has some financial implication. These financial implications are already inside the budget that I prepared, so you can see that this uh, money, including the, um, the uh, proposed new Office of Astronomy for Education, is included in this, in this um, expenditure. So this is essentially in a very summary way what we are proposing and what we have discussed uh, in the, on the previous, on the first uh, preparatory meeting and in the second preparatory meeting yesterday. So we are coming this at this point, the point to vote for the uh, accounts, to the closure of the accounts for the triennium and the vote for the projection. These are two different votes and these are taken by the national member because this is a financial matter. So I'm now asking to vote for the uh, closure of the accounts uh, of the triennium uh, closing this year. So is there any vote against? Any abstention? I consider there is none abstention, so this is approved, the closure is approved unanimously. Again, I would like to ask you to raise your card to show the approval. Thank you. Now we, no, I don't think we need an applause to close an account, it means that uh, everything is fine, but I mean it's uh, Wait for the, for the second point. I mean, this, the second vote is, is more important because it's about the future. For the past, I mean, we, whatever is done is done. Um, <laughs> so now we vote for the projection for the next triennium. And I'm asking if there is any vote against. I see none. Uh, any abstention? There is one. And with the abstention of the representative of Sweden, uh, the projection is approved. I ask again to raise your card to show the approval. Thank you, and now I can accept an applause. <laughs> now we come to uh, another important point, which is the appointment of various committees. Uh, we start with the finance committee. Um, a part of the committee, as usual, is remaining for a second term and uh, there is a renewal. So those that remain, uh, there is Johao Alves that is uh, taking the chair of the committee. And then Kate Brooks from Australia, Matthew uh, Cavalas from Canada, Laszlo Kiss from Hungary, and Lee Ann Wilson from the US, these are the remaining members for the second term. And I'd like to thank them for the task, for the, the work they've done. It was very pleasant to work with them, communicate, and they were being very, very supportive. And I'm, I'm sure this will continue for the next term. Now, for the new members is um, uh, Michel Denefel from France, uh, Gadiara, I have to know. Chakaprani Anapuma, Anupama, sorry, from India, and Navang from China, Nanjing. Uh, these are the new members that have been elected by the national members. So now I ask the uh, national member to approve what they have voted. Is there any vote against? Any abstention? So the committee is appointed for the next triennium. Thank you. Yes? Oh, come on, come on. 
this is not a Freudian slip, this is just a mistake. <laughs> okay. Joao will, well, I will offer him a, be a beer later on, okay. <laughs> this is the, now the membership committee. Again, there is a number of members that are remaining. Uh, David Sovdebrom is uh, has accepted to chair the new uh, committee. And then we have William Harris from Canada, Sona Elerova from Czech Republic, Sofia Felsing from Sweden. She is now elected for the first time together with uh, Loran Ayer, Switzerland, uh, Vivienne Dunandi from India, Serena Ditti from the UK, and Michelle Story from Australia. These are the, have been elected for the first time. And this is the membership committee that will analyze the um, proposal for new members. I just want to note that uh, this committee in the past was starting working only in, uh, in the months preceding the General Assembly. Now he, they will have to work every year because a junior member can apply every year. And so they will have to start that. And uh, we will have to work together with them to, uh, already started with uh, David, to uh, draw clear instruction for the submission so that uh, we uh, capitalize from the experience that we have gained in the first uh, term admitting junior. Um, and uh, we had a, a lot of comments and, and um, it's a very good thing that we have some of the members of the previous committee remaining so that they can um, help this process to become very, very smooth. So again, for this committee, I ask if the national member has any objection. I see none, any abstention. So, okay, the membership committee is appointed for the next VM. Thank you very much. The resolution committee is appointed directly by the executive committee. Well, it's selected by the, um, by the executive committee, but it has to be um, appointed by the national member. So, uh, from the previous uh, committee, we keep uh, Sergei Kleoner that has accepted to be the chair, Katya Kuna from Brazil, and Toshio Fukushima from Japan. These are remaining. And uh, Boris Shustov has been nominated by the executive committee as uh, foreseen in the statutes, and Klaus Leiterer from the US uh, also nominated by the executive committee. And uh, so I'm asking uh, if there is any objection to this, any abstention? So the committee is appointed uh, and thank you for the work that they will do next time. I hope they will have easier task than the current one. <laughs> the special nominating committee is the committee that uh, is a kind of search committee that will uh, look in due time for um, new, the new officers the new president-elect, the new assistant general secretary, and the new uh, division, pre uh, sorry, um, vice presidents. Uh, so this is, um, this is the composition that uh, uh, is foreseen by the, by the um, statutes. So we have the president and past president that has ex officio member of this, and then they appointed uh, Masahiko Ayashi from Japan as member nominated by them. And then these uh, four members, Beatriz Garcia from Argentina, uh, Lydia Fandril from France UK, Grazina Tautzaziene from Lithuania, and Jonas Ablan Othron from Australia, these were uh, voted from a slate which had been proposed as foreseen by the status by the division presidents. And so this is the, now the composition of the special nominating committee. I'm asking if the national member has any objection to this, any abstention. So the special nominating committee is appointed for the next triennium. Thank you very much. <laughs> and now this 
has been the work of the previous uh, special nominating committee. You already know the uh, result of this because I indicated in the previous session, but now we need to have the vote for this, which will be, for me, the uh, time of switching from general secretary to advisor. So the president is Evin van Dishok. The president-elect is Debra Elmegreen. The general secretary, Maria Teresa Lago. The assistant general secretary, Jan Robson from the UK. These are the officers for the next uh, triennium. The vice president remaining for the second term are Ajit Kambali, Boris Shustov, and John Anshaw. Now, as I explained in the previous um, General Assembly, but maybe other people were not there at the time, um, we had this, uh, uh, not problem, but I mean this um, um, yeah, issue to solve after we appointed, uh, well, the special nominating committee appointed Debra as president-elect. Debra was uh, vice president in the, her first term. So she left a hole in the uh, slate of vice presidents and because we didn't want to uh, mm, break the three year rotation, so the three members of the, uh, of the executive committee remain for two terms and this created the very useful rotation and continuity of the executive committee. So we had to find a replacement for uh, Debra, and so we, the, executive, the special nominating committee asked John Earnshaw, who was the uh, his previous president of Division C, if he would accept to serve just for one term uh, in the hall left by Debra. He accepted, and so he is now included as a vice president for just one term. Then we have the new members, the new vice president who has been selected, Laura Ferrarese from Canada, uh, Daniela Lazzaro from Brazil, and Yunichi Watanabe from Japan. This is now presented as the executive committee for the triennium 2018-2021. And as usual, uh, Silvia torres Bainberg, past president, and myself, as past general secretary, remain for three years as advisor to the executive committee. I'm now asking the uh, national member if there is any objection to this list, to this um, composition, any abstention. Then the new executive committee, as shown here, is approved for the next triennium. Thank you very much. And I think I would like now to invite the new vice president to come to the podium next to the officers. They didn't know that before, but I mean, I, I'm, I mean I'm still in power to, to be, give instructions. So thank you, Laura, Daniela, and John to join. sitting up. Okay. We need one more chair, please. Now, this is time I give the floor to the new president, Evin, to present the uh, special prize in astronomy, outreach, development, and education. Okay, good. So, we have taken some very important decisions now, so it's now time for something else. And uh, one of the things that you have done uh, just uh, about an hour ago is uh, to approve the new strategic plans. 
And one of the actions that we actually have in that particular plan is that we want to continue to enhance and diversify the portfolio of prizes to reflect the changes that we have in the priorities of the Union. We have always, of course, celebrated scientific excellence, and we will continue to do that. We have already added the new PhD prizes in each of the divisions to honor not just the senior people, but also to honor the, the young people and celebrate their scientific achievements. But now that the INEU has, has expanded in, in many different directions in terms of development and education, outreach, um, and also in the young astronomers, uh, we felt that it is time that we also start uh, to honor those that contribute enormously in those areas. Now, in order to do that, we need to raise funds in order to <laughs> uh, present prizes, um, and we need to have proper processes in place, but we felt that we should not wait for three years to the next General Assembly to present the, a first special prize on, uh, in this area. So, for this particular case, we had a special award, a special award just for this year, uh, by the Executive Committee in the area of astronomy, outreach, development and education. And so this is the first step to having more regular of these uh, awards, but we really want to send a, a signal to the membership that this areas, these areas are very important for us and that therefore we want to honor what is happening there. So this special award for astronomy, outreach, development and education is to be awarded to Dr. Carolina Edman. Now, unfortunately, Carolina cannot be here in person, but she is here actually in the computer. <laughs> and uh, Kevin, <laughs> Governor, is here with Carolina. <laughs> Congratulations, uh, Carolina. <laughs> Congratulations. Let me give you a quick citation. So it's basically for her pioneering work in astronomy outreach, development, and education. During the last 15 years, Carolina has used her unique combination of creativity, intelligence, pragmatism, and her warm personal qualities to develop programs that use astronomy to benefit society and humanity globally. Her accomplishments are many and unique. Just to mention a few of them, as the Universe Awareness International Project Manager, Carolina really turned UNAWE from an idea into a thriving international program. It is a multidisciplinary network of hundreds of astronomers, teachers and outreach experts operating in more than 40 countries and reaching more than 200,000 children in that period. It was a global cornerstone of the International Year of Astronomy. When she had immigrated to South Africa, a country that has pioneered the use of astronomy as a tool for capacity building, she became director of the academic development at the African Institute for Mathematical Sciences. There she contributed significantly to the AIMS mission of giving bright young African scientists an opportunity to learn from some of the best lecturers around the world. She then became the chief scientist at Tumzep, an innovative South African company that pioneers the development of new technology for consumers. And recently, she rejoined the astronomical community as an associate professor at the University of Western Cape and associate director of development and outreach at the Inter-University Institute for Data Intensive Astronomy, a partnership of four South African universities. It is clear that Carolino has been a pioneer in all of these aspects both education, outreach, and development, and that she's a highly worthy recipient of this prize. A warm congratulations. There she is on this side. <laughs> to Carolina again. <laughs> and here is the, the special award that I will now hand <laughs> <announce> to, <laughs> to Kevin. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't show her the award. So, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, so she sent a few words. 
I'm just going to read it. Um, I am deeply humbled by this award and quite speechless in all honesty. I am also both excited and grateful that through this prize, development, outreach, and education are given the recognition of the important role they play in the development of astronomy through people and in the development of our people, our communities, and our societies through astronomy. Throughout my career, I have realized what a privilege it is to be scientifically educated, as it is science that underpins our technologically dominated society today. And as scientists, we have the gift of understanding and building it. With such a privilege comes a will that I, that I gladly interpret as a responsibility to share the benefits of such an education with those I am fortunate to meet along my journey. From the unbeatable magic of seeing Saturn through a telescope to the genuine fandom for projects like the SKA I have witnessed amongst engineers working in industry, I believe that our science affords us an incredible opportunity to engage all people to broaden all minds individually and, and collectively and to work together for a common and inclusive good. And that is the spirit that will always guide my work. So thank you very, very much from the bottom of my heart. Now, Avin has run away, but now it comes the real point. <laughs> now, before I give again the floor to Avin, I want to state very clearly that last Saturday, actually for the entire weekend, I was not in Vienna. <laughs> I was away, and I, can, I have tes testimony that can say that uh, I was not here. So I'm very curious to know what is the result, as you are, I'm assured. Indeed, we've now come to a very important uh, moment in the proceedings, because indeed last Saturday, uh, a subset of the executive committee met here in this building for most of the day. Um, and we heard four excellent presentations from the cities that uh, you remember from the first general uh, assembly meeting, business meeting uh, last week. We heard from Rome, we heard from Puebla, we heard from Montreal, and we heard from uh, Cape Town. And uh, they were really excellent pre uh, presentations. All four cities had done an enormous amount of work in uh, the preparation of their proposals. Um, so at the end, actually, we thought, well, this is easy. We can just actually now decide for 2024, 27, 30, and 33, <laughs> because <laughs> all four of them were excellent. But unfortunately, that was not in our mandate. We had to choose only one. And we deliberated it for quite some time about the strengths and the weaknesses. There were very few weaknesses. It was really all strengths versus strengths. And so we know also know that we are going to break a lot of people's hearts by being able to select only one city and not uh, three other cities uh, at the same time. And so we hope that the cities that are not uh, selected, that they, they, they will come back because they also had excellent uh, proposals. So here's the envelope. <laughs> And uh, I can take it out, and uh, I can uh, say to you that uh, the IEU Executive Committee has decided for Africa. We are going... Precise dates are still under discussion. I think it's end of June, beginning of July was the proposed dates, but there is still some, some, some flexibility there in that, that. 
But uh, so you will hear more about and probably see more about it uh, with beautiful pictures uh, in hopefully in the newspaper uh, tomorrow. Um, but uh, yes, so that is the important step there. That's the end. So at this point, I'm the, this concludes the uh, second business session of the General Assembly. I'd like to thank all of you for this participation. And uh, I'll come back to you in a moment with my outgoing speech. But before that, I hand over the master of ceremony for the closing, for the closing of this uh, assembly. It's not already some closing words. We first have to take the group photo. And uh, because you have seen that outside of the, of the conference venue, there's no chance, for instance, to take, because of the security reasons there, uh, to, to take the group photo. So we have decided to take it in the room here in the Hall A. But uh, it's not possible to have all the people spread throughout the, the room here, throughout the hall. So I would ask you, Really to condense and to compact you a little bit to the central part, and then our photographers will tell us whether this is sufficient. Otherwise, we have really to condense even more. Thank you. Please come to the to the inner part, to the inner two tubes. The volunteers were asked to form the, the edge of the photo. So they stand at the edges on the right and on the left hand side. And please, the others, come together. You can sit down because then the, your face is better to distinguish and better, better visible on the photo. Standing, yes? Yeah? St OK, standing, standing was told me standing is better. So the, <laughs> the taller ones to the back, <laughs> standing better, yeah? Please come in from, from, from the outskirts, please come in. He gives a command. Still? Yeah. Still. still. Please stand still. <laughs> Hi. So I'm going to take two uh, round of photos, all panoramas. So please, and I mean please, do not move during this day. <laughs> And uh, you don't need to say cheese or anything. Just be yourself, enjoy the moment. 
if you feel like you are blinking too much, you can close your eyes for a couple of seconds and then open them widely. And yeah, enjoy the moment. Please don't leave. We have the closing ceremony now and the flag handover ceremony. And we are just in time. In five minutes, we will start. So please take your seat and stay in the room. Later, after, 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 yes, oh, please, okay. please. <laughs> <clears throat> 